everyone, this is Jay Harris coming to you from Tom's Trading Room. I'm going to go over a part one, two, and maybe a part three video in regards to going through the process with the tools. What do you mean the process? The finding a trade candidate, documenting and saving the trades as paper trades in the tools so that you can track through to completion for profit or for loss what's going on with these trade scenarios or these case study scenarios that are found by Tom's tools whether you're using any number of these buttons here or you're using the basic members uh, tool set uh, which is the dark net and the money calendar uh, you're going to want to go ahead and set up a folder to save case studies or paper trades of those specific strategies with stocks that meet the rules of that strategy. And then you'll track them through to completion, again, profit or loss, and then be able to use the tools to do an evaluation, a performance review, if you will, to see what strategies are working better than others how well you're managing the trades once you're actually in them. Are you adhering to a 50% stop loss or are you taking all your trades to zero or somewhere uh, in between? As well, folks, you want to know how, now that I have the tools, what's the process? Where do I start? Well, let's do it first and foremost with A, setting up your folders. B, we're going to go through and look at a darknet trade uh, scenario uh, and then save that case study or trade scenario or paper trade into the tools and then they'll be in there for us to track going forward. I'll then stop the video once we've completed that. I'll look to do the same thing for money calendar and if we need to do a third one it'll be just kind of like an overview of everything we've discussed in the previous two videos. So here we go. We are at the Tom's Tools page, actually the options basics page for those that are just members to Tom's Tools, meaning you just have the Darknet and you just have the money calendar and you get in the newsletter. If you have any mastery courses that you've enrolled for or you're in the partner program, you have access to a ton more buttons, a ton more scans. But let's just start here. So let's go to the Home tab. Let's go ahead and click on Darknet Signals. Before we get too far into the analysis of this, what I want us to focus on first is creating folders because it's the folders in which you're going to uh, save the trades and do your paper trading in your record keeping. So forgive me for jumping the gun here. Let's go up to the website tab. Let's go to folders and then click on create folders. You'll see a few folders here in this sample account that I've created to do these videos. Let's click in the new folder name and type in darknet and I'm going to call them buys because we're pretty much using darknet for buy signals. We're not using the S signal for sell or you know going along puts or any uh, bearish strategies. So I'm going to call the folder darknet buys and I'm going to click on save. You'll see that it alphabetizes it into the list of folders that you may already have or maybe the only folder that you have listed thus far. Now let's go back up to the home tab and click on darknet signals. When this populates, and you'll see that I've set it back for 914, that way it gets us a handful of candidates to evaluate. Uh, last Friday's didn't yield any darknet signals. So here we are. We've got a list of 12 darknet opportunities, and the type of signal that they are, buys, rebuys, or aggressives, uh, are listed here in the type column. We've got predominantly B, or buy candidates. It's listed in a uh, top-down approach or the first ranked stock to the 12th ranked stock by way of percent to double, the lowest percent to double. So out of all of these listed, the GLD, the Spider Gold Shares, has a buy and it has the lowest percent to double, which means it only needs to increase 4.69% for this option value to double. And here's the call trade, the option trade. You'll also notice above here it says active darknet signal trades. This is the criteria for the option. If it has a slippage between the bid ask on the option of less than 1.5%, the delta is less than 80 but greater than 40. And you know Tommy likes to look in that 70-75 delta. But it's giving you a little bit of a wider net than that. Again, an 80 to 40 delta. And again, number one on the list is the GLD. It shows the stock trade and it shows the call trade. Let's first and foremost, folks, click on the stock symbol. This will bring up a snapshot of the window and show you the darknet view for this stock. And you'll see there's the buy signal. 
it kind of coincides with an almost meeting a double bottom support area down where this last rebuy signal came for was at 104 and it's slightly above that currently at 106. Now at this point in time a lot of other people will say well look at this look at the uh, MACD look at the stochastics look at Bollinger Bands. Folks you can slide into the view on your charts or go to other charting programs and add any other batch of technical analysis that you like. We're going to rely for the education here on this tool it's looking for channel collisions and you can go to a separate chart in the tools and bring up the channels but let's just say whatever extra analysis that you do you come to agree that this is the one that you're going to hang your hat on or at least paper trade now we cannot recommend what trades to do this is not a brokerage trading platform we're not brokers we're not registered rias we're an educational publishing firm teaching you system strategies methodologies ways to trade ways to manage trades and the tools that help us get that done so let's go ahead and click on the chart and make it disappear click on the call trade now the october of 2015 the week twos it's going to open up a new browser window likely it's going to go to the risk graph plus plus page and once that populates you're going to see all the information right here now we have the leg date the number of contracts the option symbol the expiration the type of trade it is 102 and 50 cent calls and the entry is 435 now you have the bid ask here and it's going to as i have it set up show you the mid price if it doesn't you can type in it'll probably show you the ask price 440 then your volume your open interest and all your Greeks we're going to then show you the risk graph and you'll see that the risk graph at the top shows a stock valuation of $128 and a low of $84 and then over to the left you see what's going on with the stock right here now it's at this point in time that you can say okay i know what my percent to double percentage needed is but what is that specific stock price point pop down below here and you will see that if we have to wait for the worst case scenario and that is expiration for the price of 111.10 to be hit then our options should show a double in value now it can hit a lower price than that and show a double sooner than that but again we're looking at worst case scenario so we know that to the upside it needs to hit 111.10 now where is your stop loss you can say well we're going to go with a 50 cent stop in 50 percent in the 50 cent stop forgive me a 50 percent stop so a 50 percent stop from 435 would be about 217 218. now you can put your cursor on the risk graph lines and see where that minus 218 would take place over different time intervals you can also set the lower limit to be where the chart shows you over here the low of the support area is a support area of around oh let's say and if we put our cursor on the bars it will actually populate up a value box for us so about 103.93 was the lowest closing low of that support area so let's go like a penny below that and say 103.92 so what we can do for our stock uh, limits on the risk graph is down here at stock limits go uh, 10 what was that number again well scroll back up and find out 103.92 i believe it was or 10 yeah the close 103.93 the low is 103.78 so let's go a penny below the close there 103.92 now you can agree with me or not and that's the beauty of this you set up your own stop loss price point area and you put that in there on your lower limit the upper was 111.10 so let's go ahead and click on 111.10 to the upside once we go 111.10, we have the lower and upper limits set. Let's click on the risk graph plus plus. We're going to apply these settings to the risk graph. It will refresh the page and come back up with a risk graph with more of a zoomed in view. So that at the top of the risk graph, you're going to see what the value of the option will be at that 111.10 price. As you see right there, 111.10, there, there's your values at all different intervals up until expiration here is the 103.92 again you can make whatever lower price you want and you can go ahead and put your cursor on any of those colored lines to see the actual profit or valuation and the stock price that corresponds to that 
Now, down below here, you can go ahead and click on uh, update. And if you want to update those general settings, you can. What we want to do now, folks, is let's just say, okay, we went to Darknet. We found a candidate that says at 111.10, it should double in value. It has the tightest slippage and it has the lowest percent to double. So we want to save this trade. You know, our entry for one contract would be $435, as it shows here. Your max profit is unlimited to the upside up until expiration. And your max risk, if you take this to a zero valuation, is the $435. Now, you can change the number of contracts. We can get into this in another discussion at another time. But for a lot of you guys, you already know, we're simulating a lot of our case studies on our publications based off an account size of $25,000, risking no more than 2% on any one trade. So 2% of 25,000 is 500, which means our cost and our entry debit is also our cost of the trade, which is also our risk of the trade. So here we have $435. If we did one more contract, that would take the entry debit or cost or risk to $870, and that would break our money management rules of keeping it no greater than the 2% of the account portfolio size. So let's leave it with a number of contracts of one. Our entry is 435, the 10250 calls. We adjusted our risk graph. And now we'll go ahead and make sure in our folder we change it to the Darknet Buy folder. Now it's here you can go ahead and click Save. But before you do that, I want to encourage you to do as all of our instructors encourage you to do, uh, and that is put in a trade rationale. So your entry rationale would be Darknet Buy. Our technical stop could be that 103.92. Our technical profit targets could be the upper limit, which is 110. Uh, what is it? 111 and 10 cents. Okay, so let's change it to be consistent. 0 0.10. Your position size. Let's leave that alone because we're not your brokers. We can't tell you, you know, what kind of position size you are to take or you should take. We'll put case studies out there based off that, you know, 25K portfolio at 2%, but that's up to you. You want to make this look like it's going to look in your actual account. Now, even though we can't make this a recommendation, we can't tell you to do this. We can tell you to paper trade it so you can see if this strategy is working with the tools and then make your decisions whether or not you want to do this for lifelong and eternity in your actual account once you get some confidence with this strategy with the darknet tool but we can't put the stop loss so let's just say we put evaluate at minus 50 percent now you can see on the risk graphs what that 50 percent would be and put that in your stock lower limit or you can leave it as it is here on a technical basis and just know that when the value of the option gets it less than 50 percent you decide from there if you think it's going to bounce from there hold support there or if this is as much loss as you want to endure on this case study and then take it off at 50 percent the profit target well that's a double right so at 110 excuse me 111 and 10 cents it should double in value so 435 double should be 870 so let's go ahead and put 870 dollars right there 870 and then your time stop you could say expiration obviously i mean we can't monitor this past expiration the trade would be done uh, but again if it hits that minus 50 percent anytime up until expiration you'll evaluate it at that time so now you have all that information done let's now go ahead and pop back up here make sure that you have the folder selected darknet buys and click save that's going to wrap it up for this session here that's going from start to finish on finding a darknet candidate making your uh, analysis on your upside and downside target profit target stop and then how to document the trade adjust your risk graph limits and then save it into that folder that you created for that from here now as you go ahead and march forward <coughs> and get to the current dates you'll see if it hits that target to the upside or downside and then we'll go over closing the trades at a later session in fact there are closing trade videos in the free video section. So hit those up and we'll talk to you soon and stay tuned as I go through this for the money calendar.